Judge Whitley appeared more sympathetic, more sympathetic to counsel and others against London justices and travellers and others. Lord Briggs will hand down this judgment. This appeal concerns the assistance which may be received from the court when local authorities are seeking to prevent trespass and breach of planning legislation, which occurs when groups of gypsies and travellers <coughs> camp on local authority and other land. But it raises fundamental questions about the extent of the court's power to grant injunctions, that is, orders requiring people to do or not to do things on pain of punishment if they ignore the court's order. In particular, it raises the question whether the court should ever make such orders against persons who, at the time when the order is sought, are unknown and not individually identifiable, and who have yet to commit, or even threaten to commit, any trespass or other breach of the law. I will call them newcomers, and an injunction against them a newcomer injunction. If someone finds a person or persons camping on their land without their permission, then, if all else fails, they can usually go to court and get an injunction ordering them to leave and not to return, because they are trespassing. But that ordinary process does not generally work well in relation to groups of gypsies or travellers. If the landowner finds a group of them camping, starts proceedings, obtains an injunction and tries to serve them with the court order, they will often have moved on and been replaced by another different group against whom the existing proceedings and order are of no effect. If the landowner then starts fresh proceedings against the new group, they may also move on with the same result. So between 2015 and 2020, a number of local authorities asked the court to make an order against persons unknown, prohibiting either trespass on local authority land within the borough or a breach of planning control, since residential camping on land generally requires planning permission, which gypsies and travellers usually do not obtain. These injunction orders were obtained by the local authorities going to court on their own, without notice to anyone, and obtaining the injunction at a hearing at which there was no one present to put forward any defence for the gypsies or travellers, or reason why the order should not be made, such as a disproportionate interference with their right to family life. From around mid-2020, the local authorities made applications to extend or vary injunctions which were coming to an end. After a hearing in one of these cases, the High Court judge decided that there was a need to review all newcomer injunctions affecting gypsies and travellers. These claims were managed so as to be heard together before that judge. Three bodies representing gypsies and travellers, one, London gypsies and travellers, two, friends, families and travellers, and three, Derbyshire gypsy liaison group, were invited to become parties and make representations on their behalf. The judge decided, following a particular Court of Appeal decision about protesters, that, except on a very short-term basis, newcomer injunctions were not legitimate at all, whether against travellers or anyone else who had not been joined to the proceedings as a defendant. The local authorities appealed to the Court of Appeal, which decided that the judge was wrong. In its view, any newcomer learning of an injunction prohibiting persons unknown from camping on specific land would automatically become a defendant to the proceedings by disobeying it. The Gypsy and Traveller representatives appealed to this court. Because of the implications of this case for groups of protesters and demonstrators, Friends of the Earth, Liberty, HS2 and the Secretary of State for Transport were also permitted to intervene and make submissions. This court unanimously dismisses the appeal. Lord Reed, Lord Kitchen and I deliver a short judgment with which Lord Hodge and Lord jo Lloyd-Jones agree. We have decided that, although newcomer injunctions against persons unknown are a new development in the law, they may, subject to proper safeguards, be granted to ensure compliance with the law where there is shown to be a compelling need to do so and no other remedy appears to be likely to be effective for the purpose of ensuring compliance with the law. But we have reached this conclusion for different reasons than those given by the Court of Appeal. In particular, we have not been persuaded that the answer to the problem lies in focusing on those who become defendants by disobeying the injunction. In our view, we should start from the general principle that injunctions are expected to be obeyed, 
and that the effect of an injunction upon a newcomer who obeys the injunction and therefore never becomes a defendant needs to be our primary focus. Our reasons for dismissing the appeal may be summarized as follows. One, there is no doubt, and the appellants did not contest, that the court's very wide statutory jurisdiction to grant injunctions give it the power, in the sense of the authority, to grant an injunction against newcomers. The real question is whether to do so would ever be a proper exercise of that power, in particular in the gypsy and traveler context. Two, although now enshrined in statute, the court's power to grant an injunction was originally, and continues to be, a type of equitable remedy, governed therefore by equitable principles. Three, those principles derive from the important role of equity in remedying defects or inadequacies in the remedies provided by the common law for the protection or enforcement of the claimant's rights. Relevant equitable principles include the following, that where there is a right, there should in principle be an effective remedy, that equity looks to the substance rather than the form, that equity acts in an essentially flexible way that will respond over time to change circumstances and perceive new needs, and that apart from justice and convenience, equity is not constrained by any limiting rule or principle which has become sacrosanct over time. We review at some length the way in which equity has radically developed the remedy of an injunction over time to meet newly perceived needs, including freezing orders, search orders, anti-suit injunctions, third-party disclosure orders, and internet blocking orders, and has in the process broken through every supposed limiting rule which might have been thought to stand in the way. We conclude that there is no immediate ancestor of which the newcomer injunction may simply be said to be a natural development, and no magic in whether it is granted in interim or final form. Its essential characteristic is that it is granted without prior notice to the unknown persons whom it is intended to constrain, and may in principle be effective against the whole world. Six, it follows that a newcomer injunction will only be granted if there is a compelling need to do so in order to secure enforcement of the applicant's rights or, as the case may be, the due observance of planning or other public law, a need which is unlikely to be met by any more conventional remedy or other power available to the local authority. Seven, it also follows from the fact that newcomers sought to be constrained will not know about the proceedings or be joined as defendants to them that every effort will need to be made to ensure that persons who become affected by the injunction because they wish to camp at a prohibited site are given a fair and proper opportunity to contest the making or continuation of the injunction against them. This is likely to require notification by advertisement on the internet and elsewhere in advance of the intended application for a newcomer injunction. Prominent notification of it once granted on the affected sites and ensuring that anyone affected knows that they can come to court quickly to have the injunction varied or set aside if proper grounds for doing so can be shown. Eight, applicant local authorities will also be obliged to comply strictly with the duty on all those who seek relief without notice to their opponents to make full disclosure to the court after due research of all facts and matters which might militate against the grant of the injunction which they seek. Our judgment considers in some detail the principles which ought generally to govern the making, content and duration of newcomer injunctions against gypsies and travellers, but leads their detailed working out to the courts where applications for such injunctions are made. <laughs>